when you hear a lump of coal, you know that you are the only one that have seen it. You are the first one to see it. And there's a difference every day underground. You go today, you've got a prop in. You go tomorrow, that prop is broken. A legend told by the men of the coal fields of South Wales, the Midlands, Northumberland and Durham, and set into song by Ewan McCall. The Big Hewer. As a boy, four, five, six year old, I remember my father talking about this legendary figure, Temple. Temple the Big Hewer. Whether he was real or purely legendary, I never knew, even to this day. In darkness I was born Go down Out of the hard black coal face I was torn Go down Kicked on the world and the earth split open Crawled through a crack where the rock was broken Burrowed a hole away in the coal Go down Oh, that was Jackie Tor from Derbyshire in a cradle of coal in the darkness I was laid Go down Down in the dirt and darkness I was raised Go down Cut me teeth on a five foot timber Held up the roof with me little fingers Started me time away in the mine Go down <laughs> Oh yes, we got to find umpteen stories about Isaac Lewis in the anthracite. On the day that I was born, I was six foot tall, go down. And the very next day I learned the way to hoe, go down. On the third day worked at Bard and Pillar, worked on the fourth as a long wall filler, getting me steam up, you in the seam, go down. Yes, oh yes, this Towers, well, you couldn't be beat this George Towers. Is Robert big, you... Towers. Bob Towers. <laughs> bah, he's a big man. Could you imagine? He's 18 stone. No fat. No fat. 18 stone of man. What they call the county of Durham, big you. He was like a machine when he was you, and you could hear the pick, 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 pick. As regular as the clock. Never used to see him. Never higher. I'm the son of the son of the son of a collier's son. Go down. Coal dust flows in the veins where the blood should run. Go down. Five steel ribs and an iron backbone. Teeth that can bite through rock and black stone. Work in me time away in the mine. Go down. When I say a miner, I mean a chap whose roots are right down through the earth. I felt it was a great thing to be a miner as a boy, to go down the pit and to come up, and he, I felt that I was a brave man and all the rest of it. What is it makes a young and a likely lad go down? Far from the light of day, what sends him underground? To win his bread in the dark of the mine Where the rain never falls and the sun never shines What makes a man go down? As my old mother used to say to me What's bread in the bone, you cannot knock out of the flesh That's all my father told me. Get on your toes and, uh, and the manager is approaching you now. And if he asks your name, reply sharply to your name and stand on your toes, show that you are tall and willing to work. 
And that's what my father advised me. School days over, come on then, John. Time to be getting your pit boots on. On with your shirt and wool skin trousers, time you was on your way. Time you was learning the pitman's job and earning the pitman's pay. I was 14 when I first went down the mine. November the 5th, Guy Fawkes night, on a Monday. Come on then, Jim, it's time to go. Time you was working down below. Time to be handling a pick and shovel your start at the pit today. Time you was learning the collier's job and earning a collier's pay. I was 12 when I left school, and as soon as I reached the age of 14, I went to the pit. The pit was the place. Come on then, die, it's almost light. Time you was off to the anthracite. The morning mist is in the valley, it's time you was on your way. Time you was learning the miner's job and earning a miner's pay. When I was a boy, we all thought of the mines. When I was in school, I used to parade wearing my uh, long trousers and parading with my, uh, my naked lamp on the road in the night as colliers. Months before I had a job, you see. Oh, yes. Come on then, John. Why, I? Come on there, Jim. Right on. Come on, die. Yes, Bart. Off you go today, off to earn your pay in the mine lab. Never will forget that day. Never will, not as long as I live. Now don't be late, you've got your bait, you've got your cold tea in the bottle, now you're every inch a miner. Your mother didn't want me to go to the pit. You're a miner, you're a pitman, you're a collier, you're a miner. I hated it. I hated the first day I had there. Now let's have some of that pitman swagger when you walk. And let's have some of that real pitmatic when you talk. I'll bet that you don't feel so spry down in the darkness there in by of the Beaumont Sea. In a three foot face of coal. Starting at 14, knowing that you're going to go down a big pit, it is a little bit frightening. But you're away, you're bound below. And your pit boots ring and clatter as you go, making sparks fly. You're on your way to the pit bank where men riding cages wait. Where the rusting cables lie. Where the broken picks and shovels, where the heap of waste and rubble rises up against the sky. To the pit bank, to the pyramid of slaves. Where the banksman gives and takes the signals at the gates. Now off you go and punch the clock, so just you wait there in the line. Don't let them see you feeling scared. Put your card back in the rack and follow at the back of others as they cross the yard. You'll soon be on the ground, you're almost there. Now to the token cabin, get your lamp and check it, that's your best friend in the mine. Mind you always treat your lamp with care. And it's still said today, and I'll always say that the oil lamp is the miner's best friend. It'll never let him down. You're at the pit bank, you're waiting for the cage to come. 
and take you down to a world that you have never seen go down. The pits have a magic all of their own. To a place they call the Beaumont Seam go, go down. At last you can see it. I was going to see what lay below. The ship's a bad ship there. What's a drink in it? I know it's not no, no, that. Good ship this. I was over there at the club last night. Why not if you have a big dinner you don't have to go? Are you going to get a big dinner? Well, you ain't going to come in? There's the signal bell. Now the cage is coming. To take you down with the men of the morning shift All the different kinds of miners There are heroes And there are putters And there are brushers, there are practice men and cutters There are holliers and creeper lads and rappers There are drawers, there are benchmen, there are strappers <laughs> There are pillar men and clippers, there are trammers, wagon tippers, there are pulley men are going down the hole. There are timber men and strippers, fit to shacklers and rippers, all are miners and they help to get the coal. Now it's into the cage and wait for the onset to spring run. The onset, of course, is generally a sour-faced bloke. He's got to be to control them all. There are brakemen, there are swagmen, there's back-end and wagon waymen, there are firemen and stallmen, there are heading men and roadmen, there's a bellman and an overman, a cockman and a waterman, all miners and the help to get the coal. And the signal is wrong. And the cage is away, there are lushers on and fillers. There are packers, there are drillers, there are deputies and hitchers and the dilly bottom lad. Hookers on and tally drivers, haulage lads and bogey riders and the others. From this day on, these men will be your brothers. When away, go down. Oh dear, the experience to go down the pit in the, in the first instance. It was a terrific experience to me. I, I wasn't shaken or, or nervous at all, but the excitement of it all. And my little oil lamp, you know, put on the belt, and we were hoarded in this uh, square cage, and I think it contained about 10 people or 12. Uh, down we'd go, the banksman would pull a lever, and down the cage would drop. Down in the dark, through the pinching seam, through the red vein, through the black band seam. And everything seemed to close in on me. I could feel the drums in my ears were just ringing, as though they were going to burst. Down through the five quarter shield, row and brass thill, maudlin and low main seams. But after you descend halfway down the pit, the most peculiar feeling you seem to be coming back up again. And I said, there's a feeling to go down. I realized what was happening now. The cage was slowing, 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 and the pressure was coming against him. Down through the soap, the white, the peacock, trigloin and lower vein, to the deep pit bottom. Oh dear, complete new world, strange world entirely. Although it was well lit, electric light at the pit bottom. But once we turn our backs on the pit bottom, I'm going into narrow places now, down into the darkness, and then the experience comes so horrible and terrible. I was frightened now. I don't know where I was going. You 
you're going to a place in the earth where the hard rock heaves and boils. It boils out as you open the road so the road closes in again. You're going to the coal face where the big hewer sweats and toils. You can't visualize this seam like a mat stretching beneath the earth a layer of a cake till you can see it and all the tunnels following you all over the pit. There's the seam, it's always there. And the smell of horse manure, that went through everything. I thought it was wonderful. It was common to everybody, whether you were an old collier working your last day or a boy working your first. There, where the earth bears down on the four-foot spars. Wonder how long it took for all this earth, this thousand and odd feet, to, to get on top of that coal. Must have been a small place, the earth. There in the world that never saw sun or moon or stars. The silence in the pit, it's, it's like infinity or, or the bottom of the ocean. It's, it's peaceful. And yet it's sometimes frightening. You could be driven to panic with it, I think. You've never known absolute blackness. Always there's stars at night and there's always a moon. But there, there's nothing. And you can f feel this pressing on you, the darkness. You can feel this darkness. The world where a man is always a stranger Where the miner works and lives with danger you see, you've got the smells, and you've got your look, and you you can put your hands behind you, and you can feel the rough surface of the stone. You see, and you feel the dust and the, and the props, the bark that was on the props. And you used to visualise things happening in the blackness. Here is the place where the big hewer earns his pay. Go down. Here is the place he battles with night and day. Go down. Spits on his hands, cracks rocks and boulders, bears up the world on his own two shoulders, digging a hole out, getting the coal. Go down. There was much to learn, is he? Especially in the case of a young boy, he wants to fill the shovel every time. And uh, he wastes a lot of energy in filling the shovel. You see? Whereas the old craftsmen used to teach us to take what was on the shovel and find a way of a shovel to fill itself. Why I am doing the pit, I'm working in the Beaumont. I'm the trapper, that's the name they give the door boy. And it's a queer job, all on your tod, just sitting watching the drums go by. You open the door, and this ghostly shape comes past the horse, and he's shouting, and you see your lamp go past. Then in the dark, and the way down, it seems as if it's ooh, hundreds of yards away. And then he got putting. I'm on me way in by and working as a putter. Shifting tubs from flats and partons to the hewers. They're light at the flat, but coming back here to where each tub wide a thousand done. And of course. That brought up your muscles as well for face work because putters began to grow huge leg muscles because when you're pushing along them, perhaps 1,200 weights. Ten years a day, you do not tool your walk and call your breathing, call your talk and call your dream and call now you're a miner. I think if I cut my fingers and it bled, it would just come out black. 
And the coal you got, the dirt and rock, the tons and tons and tons you shot would stretch from here to China. Crawling, mauling, striving, driving in the mad race at the cold face, work and sweat, that's all you get when you're a miner. So now you know how the coal it this got You champion at drilling the hole You're a dab hand at stacking You champion at packing the roof When you're shooting the coal It's the toil and the sweat Wings the coal that you get When you're working away in the hole You know how to heal when you know how to fill Cut the scorting without any trouble Set a good pair of gears and crawl on your ears And use both the pick and the shovel If a roof or a wall sag and threaten to fall Then you know how to move at the double The walk it is hard and the wages are low And the rises get smaller and fewer If you want to keep eating you'll have to be beaten The walk of the Durham Big Hewer Then away with your man and see if you can Be the walk of the Durham Big Hewer He kept himself for the job Yes, oh, yes Pride in his work Pride you know, in his work, uh, big man Poor. He's good as two men, there's no doubt about oh. that. He was as good as two men. He didn't even have to set the stand, the, no. the drilling stand, the drill a hole. He wouldn't set it between the top and the bottom. He used to stick just his foot and his hand to brace it. Man and a half. <laughs> when you're talking of skill with the pick or the drill, he's the greatest, the champion, the chief. He knows how to tell when the roof's going to fall Though the crack be as thin as a hair When the odorless gas comes along in a mass He can smell it before it is there And that's the sort of thing that you look for in a mind. I don't know, it's a, it's a queer sort of feeling And uh, it's a danger that you see there the fear. Did you know it's going to happen? It's your only defense, and they call it pet sense, and your life may depend on it there. You hear a prop creak, and you, in your own mind, you can see that little part just move that quarter of an inch. You know what's going to happen. You're not working with a piece of land. You're working with the world. But down the pit, you've got to have that in you to, to sense hidden dangers. You know full well that she can be a nasty bitch when she likes. She can be real nasty. She's like an angry woman. She just throws her weight about. And if you're not sharp enough and get out of the way of her, she'll kill you. Jimmy, come back, Jimmy, come back. It's a long way down, the mine is deep. Never relax, man, there's danger. Watch yourself. The earth is sly, the flesh is weak. Hold it. Hold on a minute. I think the top's working. Keep an eye on your roof and mind that you watch your timber. Watch for the creeping cracks where the roof is working. See where the strain is greatest. See where the strata sprain is in mind. Let's get the hell out of here. Listen for the rocks dry whisper through the cracks. For the first faint rumble. You find that 
as the strain is put on everything, the top begins to trickle a bit and you get a, a few nodules of slack come down on top of your head and then a few bits a bit bigger and then you begin to wonder well, how heavy the, the next lot's going to be, whether it'll be a two pound chunk or a half a ton. Wait for the trickling slack in the faulted vein where the rock is crushed and crumbled ground to powder. Up and down. And she's been tinkering on a bit. Bit stone been dropping. And I heard a crack. The timber just been going like pistol shots. Watch where the floor swells up like a festered coil when, when the, the timbers, timbers crack. And the girders buckle and twist and, and the roof at your back is gathering might a threatening fist of rock the whole weight of the earth. Yes. He was working next to me. And a huge stone came down and killed him. He was killed in a bit. He was killed on a Friday morning. On a good Friday morning, I shall always remember. A stone fell on him. And they brought him home. By Clyde's bonny banks Where I sadly did wander Among the pit heaps As evening drew nigh I shall always remember He was killed in the pit I spied a young woman all dressed in deep mourning, a weeping and wailing with many a sigh. Then they bring him in. I see him now. Brought him in and brought him on the stretcher on the floor there, in his pit dirt. And the men bathing him like on the floor. He am from the mine in his pit dirt they bring him the neighbors they stand by the door the fire will gun out and the bends will gun hungry he'll walk to the pit no more I was under a fall when I was 16 fall of stone, big fall it was too. I was lucky that time. Props started to crack and I made a dive to get out. The whole lot come on top of us. That was fast by the legs. And old Jim Roberts, Yankee Jim, they come and pulled me out. Two minutes after they got me out, it closed as tight as a box. Many's the time I've sat by the fire And thought how the call is won Waiting to hear his step at the door When another day's work was done Many's the time I've listened and trembled To hear that warning bell Dreading to hear that knock on the door And dreading the news they might tell But I couldn't stick that knock on the door I think all miners wives, they live on a war of nerves They're black diamonds but what are the price of, price of lives, isn't it? But a man that works down the pit, a miner, you know, it's a long way down, as the saying is. It's a long way down, 
The mine is deep. Never relax, man. There's danger. The earth is sly. The flesh is weak. I lost a good man. And yet it's good to come from the pit. Especially after you've been working there, you're tired. Especially in the summer. You say to yourself, life's good. You really feel good to be alive. Another thing, of course, in the mine communities which you must respect is the capacity for beer. Very important. Every Saturday night at the penny wet, on the wet beer of the counter, the faces propped up, the shots are fired, the coals filled off, and they get the belts bumped up and all the new chocks in. <laughs> all on the wet beer of the counter. I can judge a shot of powder to a sixteenth of a grain. I can fill me sixteen tubs, though the water falls like rain. And if you'd like to see me in the perpendicular vein, it's when I'm setting timber in the barroom. In the, the barroom, bar in the barroom, bar oh, that's it's where we congregate to drill the holes and fill the coals and shovel back the slate. And for to do a job of work, oh, I am never late. That's providing that we have it in the barroom. <laughs> Three hundred years I hewed at the coal by hand. Go down in the pits of Durham and East Northumberland. Go down. Been gassed and burned and blown asunder Buried more times than I can number Getting the coal away in the hole go down I've scrabbled and picked at the face where the roof was low Go down Crawled in the seams where only a mole could go Go down In the thin cut seams I've ripped and read it Where even the rats are born bow-legged When in the cold, away in the hole go down We had a kill, I'll never forget this, for five years 22 inches high Mark, you used to measure the props from the elbow to your doubled up fist that was the height, 80 yards long. And you used to have to trail up and down. It was wriggling, the swimming, we used to call it. And if all the yards had been reckoned up that we've cut, we could have been from here to London. I've worked in the Hutton, the Plessy, the Brockwell Sea. Go down. The Bencham, the Busty, the Beaumont, the Marshall Green. Go down. I've lain on me back in the old three-quarter Up to the chin in stinking water You in the cold, away in the hole, go down With 15 inches of water, we're using alligators for ponies where I'm working. That would soon have dust or bad roof, anything is water. All your clothes are wet, everything at the handle is wet. I think that's the worst thing in the pit. You cannot handle it, the tools probably. When they're stuck up with small coals in it too. No, you cannot walk down the pit where there's water. Not probably. I'm leaving the north, it's time I was on my way. Go down. Leaving the worked out seems they've had their day. Go down. The anthracite is hard and shining I'll try my hand at the hard rock mining I'll dig me a hole away in the cold go down And I a term the anthracite call as a beacon of life It's a beacon of light and life It gives you the light, the colours and it gives you that necessity which we call heat it is a beacon of life. Down in the dark Through the peacock seam Through 
through the big vein, through the black band seam. The peacock, the middle and the lower veins are the best anthracite veins in the world. Down through the four foot, the Cornish, the nine foot, the Bryn and the Welsh pain seams. Now, the seams in South Wales crop from the surface, and there was very little need for capital to get into the seam. What was really needed was muscle and sweat. But in the 1920s came machine cutting. That wasn't very acceptable to the workmen in the anthracite. And there was years of trouble and strife to get these machines working. The workmen had a natural fear of displacement, of employment. And in those years, it was so. The machines were put in, not so much to use the coal better and cheaper, but to displace employment. And the men were very right in their fears. Times were bad and labor cheap. Women on the waste pits scrabbling for coal. Cutters on the coal face, coils on the door. If you don't fight, then you don't eat. We've got a record of militancy that has been born out of our struggles. Now from 1926 onwards to the 1930s, it was terrible in this area. I was the only man working out of the whole street of houses, 40 houses. He didn't answer the bosses back because you know what happened, there's plenty of men waiting for your job. In Durham and Northumberland, I'm sorry for to say that hunger and starvation is increasing every day. And those were the conditions that men had to endure. It was just blooming filthy. You were treated almost like bloody animals. In every village in the Rhonda, children cry for want of meat. Throughout the land their fathers wander, singing for pennies in the street. I had a sister living in the valley at that time, and oh, what a sight was to see, uh, the pride that was there, and yet uh, they were on the verge of starvation. All they had was their pride. And oftentimes, where there was the greatest need, there was the greater pride. And an unwillingness to go and seek assistance of any kind. The miner has always had that he pride thing. He thinks, well, if he can't make his living by the, by the muscles of his arms and his legs, well, he, he just doesn't want it. That is the reason why uh, miners are so militant in their own cause. They've been taught it from the cradle. I was taught at a very early age that uh, it was like hitting out with a hammer of hate on the anvil of bitterness. Every knock had full power of hate into it. You want to struggle for every penny that was coming to you. My A 
miner has to possess that sense of humour. A glum face in the crown takes you nowhere. And the gloomier and the glummier you are, you got to join in with your wit, whatever you possess, showing that you were alive and that you were forgetting uh, the outside issues. I can't think of anything underground without the humour. We can work and we can fight, we can sing and tell a tale. Whether we come from Durham or Northumberland or Wales, let the cage go down. Come on and try the local brew. Join with us and have a few. Sit down and tell a tale or two. And if the story isn't true, it's neither here nor there. Let the cage go down. Let the cage go down. So one of the oven says, uh, just a minute, Jack, it's I want to say, though. So Jack says, what's the one to say, me about, like? He says, uh, they've got some parsnips. In the garden? He says, aye. Bye, laddie, says, uh, pretty big ones. Well, look, Jack, he says, uh, will the man tackle them up, like? Jack says, why? Because, he says, the roots, he says, come down that far. They're coming down through the roadways, in the pit. He says, the ponies going to get past. <laughs> An old mate of mine, Di Mardy, they called him, was driving a big horse in a low seam, in a low level. So when the fireman came around, the top was very, very hard, and the fireman said, well, what you want to do is to cut a bit under his feet so that the horse would go lower. So Di looked at him and muttered something under his breath, and the fireman went on his way. Came past that way about an hour later, and he saw Di banging like blazes at the top. I said, what on earth are you doing there, Di? I told you to cut a bit under his feet. He said, look, mate, you can't kid me, he said. It's his ears are catching, not his feet. <laughs> when Isaac Lewis passed away, what do you think they done? Sold him off for anthracite at 20 pounds a ton. <laughs> he had a good remedy for bad roof. Isaac Lewis, he told the manager that he had a remedy. Leave the coal under it. <laughs> Let the cage go down, come on and try the local brew. Join with us and have a few, sit down and tell a tale or two. And if the story isn't true, it's neither here nor there. Let the cage go down, let the cage go down. I worked in a pit in America. i just give you an idea of the size of it. They're winding up men. I went into the engine room and he was fast asleep. So he woke him up and said, good God, are you sleeping? You've got men on the rope. He said, what day is it? He always said, Tuesday. Oh, it's all right, he said, they're not due up till Thursday. Let the cage go down. Come on and try the local brew. Join with us and have a few. Sit down and tell a tale or two. And if the story isn't true, it's neither here nor there. Let the cage go down. Let the cage go down. Coal is a thing that costs a lot to get. You may be holding a piece of coal in your hand and turn around and say, I wonder how that coal was got. Was there any blood shedding in that coal? Was there any man's life lost in it? And there's many a one in this country has put coal on the fire where there's been a man's life lost on it. You're not burning coal. You're burning blood. There is a question of safety. There is a question of health. Ten hours a day, you're down that hole. You're working coal, you're talking coal, you're eating coal, you're breathing coal. Dust. It's always dusty. The dust was so abnormal that you couldn't see each other. You were just feeling your way about. Dusty ad. The curse of underground is the dust. Dust is the giant killer, but it doesn't strike all at once, uh, but he likes its time. And he too takes his time and he stealthily walks into your human system. 
into your lungs. He is the real enemy. So minute in his form, and yet so strong in its ravaging powers. You can feel it getting into your eyes and your throat and you come out into the baths and you're blowing it out your nose and spitting it out. Terrible cough, we sway. I've seen victims of this terrible curse, this dust. I've seen victims of it, reduced to nothing. Couldn't breathe, no lungs to breathe. Only the beating of the heart, waiting at the time to be called away. I couldn't walk any more than 10 yards, and he had to stop for breath. It was <coughs> pitiful to watch him. He even sighed. 10 yards. You can get up in the morning when the fog's thick and heavy. And your mind flashes back to old Tom Powell, old Bill Jones, old Jack Johnson, old Dave Jones. You'd be saying, well, I wonder how old Tom Powell feels this morning. You know bloody well how he feels. He's got a concrete slab of coal around his bloody inside. That's what he's got. He's probably a chap of 60 year old. He's worked on the pit since he was 15 year old, 12 year old, 13 year old. That's coal dust that he's inhaled while he's worked down there. And he's worked every day for five days a week, 10 hours a day. He's got inside his lungs a, a good tombstone of solid coal dust. They died from dust. When we record in this coal field, as we did last year, over 300 deaths from pneumoconiosis, when we say if all the, these our comrades died in one day, then you'd get the press of Fleet Street with its headlines, major disaster, you'd get Lord Mayor's funds and what have you, to assist the widows and the dependents, but because they die separately in their own little cottages, just surrounded by their own little families, then uh, there's no press lines, no uh, Lord Mayor's funds, and no sensation. And there is no compensation for it. No compensation can be paid for such a thing as this, because it is beyond repair. No money will repair it. and it have destroyed an army of the miners. My husband died from dust. Silicosis. Death from the dust. It is a legacy from the past, but now we have to run the mines. First thing, they must be safe. Today, safety is the prime factor in the working of the mine. It's a very costly business. It's costly in manpower and equipment. Down in the mine, in the peacock seam, in the big vein, in the trig line seam. Down in the four foot, the black band, the nine foot, they're working with new machines. It was a novelty to me. I'd never seen a thing like it before. But eventually the day arrived when the cutter came there and the conveyors. 
the whole paraphernalia arrived in trams down into the pit and it was erected, lined up and the cutter a drug in itself it seems to be moving on its own making its place into the small little sea and dragging itself along Once it was put into action to cut the cord, it was coming down, down slowly and cutting the coal until everything was boiling out like a wave from a sea. Everything was loose, and that's all you had to do was to fill uh, this coal into the conveyor which was moving behind you, gliding along, taking you a quarter along with it. And uh, we were there about 19 men. There are changes on the way Underground, underground You can see them every day Underground There are cutters at the base And they're speeding up the pace And you'd hardly know the place Underground, underground And you'd hardly know the place Underground Bob Temple, he is there In the mines, in the mines In the coal fields everywhere In the mines He is still the same big hewer With the courage to endure And he drives a Miko more In the mines, in the mines And he drives a Miko more In the mines I think what people forget very often when they talk of coal mining they seem to think of it as a factory that you can lock up at night and leave for the weekend. Well, it isn't that, of course. The whole thing is moving all the time. A coal face moves on all the time. All this expensive machinery has to be moved forward at four feet, six or five feet per day. A mine breathes. It changes all the time. The ground is moving all the time. You can hear it moving, especially in the deeper mines. That's the sort of factory you're dealing with. For the men who win the coal, better days, better days, gone the margarine and dole, better days. There's still dirt and toil and sweat, and the coal's still hard to get, and though danger's with us yet, there's better days, better days, and we'll beat the danger yet, better days. To compare the old days to the present day working, like changing two worlds, or if you'd like to compare a miner, I say in the old days, he was a mold groping in the dark, burrowing in complete darkness. But today, in comparison, he's like a peacock, able to see almost next to daylight. And he's very proud of himself, as proud as that peacock. Oh, it's different altogether. The conditions are better. The peer conditions, the working conditions are different, but mind it, they're not, uh, what I'll say, soft out like that. It's still the pit. Deep down in a man's heart, he feels, he loves it. He loves the earth. Everything that you use in this world comes from the earth. Your own self comes from the earth. The water you drink comes from the earth. The food you eat in some shape or form. The tools you use, the wood you use, the mats you use, the chairs you sit on. They all come from the earth. And when you die, you go back there. I've traveled east. And I've traveled west From the Ronda to Kakadi Winning my bread in the dark of the mines Working as a Kalyaladi 
I think a good pet is like a good woman. You uh, feel that you owe an obligation to both. It's been my life love to serve the men that work in the pit and to mix with them because I find that they are real men. I've worked me shifts, deep mines and drifts, and I've starved in tawny pandy. I've seen men die in the dark in by working as a collie. It's man and nature. That's what it is. You're down there, you've hewn it out, your race has hewn it out, and nature's round you all the time. It's like this master figure, only instead of a person, it's nature. I'm leaving the western pits, I'm on my way. Go down to the frontier where the North Sea meets the sky. Where the seams of virgin coal lie band under shining band And these two hands that hewed a billion tons of coal under valleys, fields and mountains Will hew again and again and again under salt sea sands and reap a bumper harvest planted these twenty million years You're not working with a piece of land. You're working with the world. Whether he was real or purely legendary, I never knew, even to this day. Out of the dirt and darkness I was born Go down Out of the hard black coal face I was torn Go, Go down. down Lived in the shade of the high pit heap I'm still down there where the seams are deep But digging the coal away in the hole Go down <laughs> 